What's up guys, it's Wasabi and I'm back with another review. This video is not sponsored, these are my thoughts and my personal opinions and experiences with the product. And today we have the Atlantis Pro Keyboard by Lamzu. Now here's a quick look at the packaging because that's what you pay for too. This has to be one of the most interesting packaging I've seen for a keyboard. It's very nicely done, very presentable and in theme with the Atlantis products. Of course you get the keyboard itself and it's wrapped in this cheap looking plastic. It comes with a full color manual and all the combination settings you need to configure the lighting on your keyboard. It comes with two extra switches and a set of extra keycaps to replace those that are colored in blue, a cable that matches the color theme of your keyboard, a keycap and switch puller. These two rubber pieces which I still haven't figured out what it's for but if you know just let me know in the comments below. And they've even included a carrying bag which is pretty cool but doesn't look like the best quality at all. But you know how Lemzu is, they always throw in a bunch of extra stuff with their products. And that's pretty much all you get from the packaging. Now before I go any further, I'm gonna manage some expectations here. Now Lamzu is a small company, they found huge success with their gaming mice. If you want, you can check them out on my channel. And this is the first time that they are doing a gaming keyboard. And this is not your average mechanical gaming keyboard, this is a Hall Effect keyboard and it's going for about $160. To give you some context of where I'm coming from with this review, before this and Landis keyboard, I was using the 60HE, the Huntsman V3 Pro TKL and the Polar 65 by Arbiter Studio. Wu Ting being the king of all Hall Effect keyboards and the Huntsman V3 Pro TKL with its rapid trigger and adjustable actuation implementation on its analog optical switches which feel very fast. All effect keyboards are still pretty new in the market so options for comparison are pretty limited right now but they are growing fast. There are quite a number of boards I'm hoping to cover this year, so do subscribe if you want to see those reviews. So the Atlantis Pro keyboard has a very clean aesthetic to it. And what I like is that there are a lot of nice angles to this CNC aluminum case. And what you get here is a full aluminum case. With some boards, it's an aluminum frame with a polycarbonate base at the bottom. Having a full aluminum case makes it feel just a little bit more premium. And this is a pretty hefty board for its size, with its weight at about 1200 grams with the cable. For me, what stands out the most is the steel plate on the bottom of the keyboard with a silver mirror finish and some blue detailing in the waves. But other than that, it's a pretty basic looking keyboard. And just so you know, this is a tray mount, not a gasket mount. So I'm gonna take this keyboard apart so you guys can have a closer look at what's on the inside. Just for you folks out there who are curious about what's really going on on the inside, here's a quick look. You'll see that the steps have a pretty generous amount of lube. What I noticed with the PCB is that there are no holes for switch pins to enter. I'm pretty sure this is the same PCB you'll find on the drunk deer because there are no pinholes on theirs either and they come with the exact same switches. Not having pinholes on the PCB was quite a bummer for me and the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I was looking forward to maybe putting some Gateron Jade switches in maybe a couple of months time when I decide to change up the experience a bit with this keyboard. But so far, all Gateron magnetic switches have two pins at the bottom and will not fit into this PCB, which is rather disappointing. Unless I snip off the pins on those switches, but that's not something I would want to do. But that's just me. As you would have already guessed by now, this is a 65% layout and it's perfect for people who want a small compact form factor without losing the arrow keys. I myself prefer having actual arrow keys to use instead of something like a mod tab function you find on the Wooting 60HE. Using a 60% layout without arrow keys for work just didn't feel quite right. So yeah, everything I do with my computer, gaming, editing, writing, it's just enough keys for you to be efficient on everything outside of gaming. With the Atlantis Pro keyboard, you get these silicone keycaps. And these are pretty much ABS keycaps with a silicone shell on top. Out of the box, they come off very smooth, but give it some time and you'll notice the difference in grip between these and double shot PBT keycaps. I do like the height of these keycaps though. They feel very nice to game with for me and I also enjoy the grip you get out of these keycaps for gaming. But if you were to ask me if silicone keycaps are worth it over the sound and quality of double shot PBT caps, I would say no but that's just me. I think a majority of people would prefer traditional keycaps. But I have to say if you're a big fan of having lighting on your keyboard, these keycaps make the RGBs look 
absolutely fantastic. It looks like a rainbow cloud and you just want to touch it. Because of the way these keycaps are made, it's mainly made of silicone with a small portion of it being ABS. The sound you get out of these keycaps sounds muted in a way and typing on them feels soft and kind of lackluster. Connectivity wise, this keyboard is wired only and comes with a 1.8 meter braided cable. I would say that the overall build quality of this keyboard is pretty good. I do have to apologize in my first look video of this keyboard, I said the EPDM foam is similar to Poron foam but in this case for whatever reason the thickness they use is so disappointing. It really feels like it's gonna rip apart just by holding it. I would recommend to swap out the foam and maybe try out two layers of tape mod for a better typing experience. The disturbing thing about this keyboard is that though it feels very solid. The paints they use on this keyboard is very prone to scratches and you know with this being a white keyboard, scratches are gonna be very obvious. And this is something that would concern a lot of people including myself and if by some chance you knock your magnesium mouse onto the edge of this keyboard, I don't know which is worse, you scratching your magnesium mouse or you scratching this keyboard. It's something that you guys should probably think about before deciding to go with this. The switches you can find on this board are Ratia Magnetic Switches, which are the same as what you would find on Drunk Deer keyboards and I would guess many upcoming Hall Effect keyboards as well. No complaints about these switches though, they feel very smooth as they are. These are factory looped but you can always take them apart and loop them even further. The best thing I find about these switches is the stem wobble or at least the lack of it. Compared to my Get Wrong KS 20s on my Polar 65, these are a lot more stable and feel much nicer for gaming. They have a total travel of 3.8 millimeters. Lowest actuation point you can set with the software is 0.2 millimeters. Initial and end force of 40 grams and 60 grams respectively. So how does the Atlantis Pro keyboard feel for gaming? Well, this is a Hall Effect keyboard. Rapid trigger and adjustable actuation works as it should and with silicone keycaps and the stable switches, this keyboard feels pretty good for gaming. Lowest actuation point you can set on this keyboard is 0.2 millimeters and the highest rapid trigger sensitivity you can set is 0.1 millimeters. After testing out a range of actuation points, not just with this keyboard, but a few other keyboards as well, 0.1 millimeter actuation is not something most people would feel comfortable using so I wouldn't worry too much about that. What's more important for me is the rapid trigger sensitivity where in games like Valorant, how quickly you come to a stop is something that would make a difference. Rapid trigger sensitivity can be configured on the up and down stroke for individual keys, which is excellent for gamers because some people find that having rapid trigger on the W and S keys gets in the way of their movement. I have to say if this is your first time experiencing a Hall Effect keyboard, you would probably say this is a good gaming keyboard. For me, after experiencing Rapid Trigger on a couple of boards, there is a difference on paper, but using it in-game, the difference is almost indistinguishable. But of course, if you're into performance peripherals, then if you can shave off a few milliseconds here and there for each peripheral, it all adds up. Because this board is pretty much using the same internals as the Drunk Deer, you can reference people's findings on its latency performance with that. When it comes to the software, honestly I'm rather disappointed with the software they use with this keyboard. And that's because when it comes to Hall Effect keyboards, the biggest part of the product experience is through the software. This software, which I'm pretty sure is a reskin of what many other recent Hall Effect boards use, it looks and feels like something from 2002. For some people, software is something that they won't care about, they just gotta set it once and never use it again. But for a lot of people who are new to Hall Effect keyboards and would like to keep exploring and testing to find their perfect setting would not have such a good experience. But to be fair, navigation is pretty straightforward. On the sensitivity tab is where you configure your actuation points for individual keys or all keys at once and it's also where you can adjust rapid trigger settings. What I like about the software here is that you can adjust the upstroke and downstroke sensitivity for rapid trigger and you can do that for individual keys. Lighting effects and customization are a little more creative here compared to other Hall Effect keyboards in this price range but Still, the interface looks like it's not something I would want to spend more than 5 minutes on. I think with companies releasing Hall Effect boards, they really gotta pay more attention to the user experience and not just selling it off as a keyboard with rapid trigger and having a CNC aluminum case. To be honest, with so many reskin clones of Hall Effect keyboards, it just makes Wu Ting look even more desirable. This may sound a little harsh, I know, but I'm thinking about gamers out there who want a good Hall Effect keyboard and want the 
most value out of it. And the last thing I want to do is recommend a board that just doesn't deliver the full Hall Effect keyboard experience. Lighting controls with the keyboard is pretty simple. Everything is controlled by pressing on the Function 2 key, press Function 2 and press T to switch off the backlight, Function 2 and Y to cycle through different colors. There are quite a few colors to choose from, Function 2 and U to cycle through different presets. And because of the opacity of these silicon keycaps, the lighting looks pretty fantastic on this keyboard. To slow down the animation, you just gotta press Function 2 and H, and to speed up, press Function 2 and J together. I must say that this keyboard has quite a few interesting lighting effects going on, especially with this one, it looks pretty cool. While the software is disappointing, how is the typing experience on the Atlantis Pro keyboard? Well... Okay, it's not garbage, but it's not satisfying. However, thank god you can get into the board and mod it, change the keycaps out for a better sounding experience. I must say that these switches do feel smooth though. Height of the keyboard is good, don't feel a need to use a wrist rest, and that's because these keycaps are pretty shallow. Now here's a quick sound test so you guys can hear what it sounds like out of the box. So in conclusion, what are some things that I like about the Atlantis Pro keyboard? Overall build quality of the board feels pretty good except for the paint, but overall weight of this board for this size feels very nice. Individual adjustment for the up and down stroke for rapid trigger is something I feel every board should have, although I'm sure it's a software thing, but it's good that this one has it. And the last thing is that the RGB lighting on this board is incredibly bright and it looks nice with these keycaps. So what are some of the things I feel can be improved with the Atlantis Pro keyboard? While having a full aluminum case is nice, it's just the white coating on this makes me feel a little uncomfortable knowing that it can be easily scratched off. So perhaps in future, they'll come up with different colorways with a more scratch resistant paint. I feel that the software needs a lot of work, but compared to some random brand that just released a Hall Effect keyboard, I trust that Lamzu would probably put in the effort and keep working on updating the software. And I feel they should have gone with a PCB with the extra pinholes so gamers have the option to use Gateron switches or any other magnetic switches with similar design. So what are three reasons I can think of of why I would get this keyboard? Reason number one, if I never experienced a Hall Effect keyboard before and the design of this is very appealing to me, I would give it a try. Reason number two, if you're a big fan of Lamzu mice and you have, let's say, an Atlantis Mini and you want a keyboard to match, then yeah, this is a good option to go with. Third reason, if you're coming from a 60% layout and you miss the arrow keys, then this is an option to consider. It's not to say that this is a bad keyboard, but from one gamer to another, I think this is pretty average and me knowing myself, I would get a bit bored of it pretty quickly. As always, my content is never to hate on any brand or their product. I'm a big fan of Lamzu Mice and I think they've been doing a great job. But my overall experience with this keyboard is pretty mediocre at best and it feels like a rushed product. It works as a keyboard with rapid trigger and adjustable actuation but if you already own a Hall Effect keyboard, I don't think that it's worth spending the extra money to get a new one. With so many Wooting clones out in the market right now, I gotta give Lemzu credit for trying something new with the silicone keycaps. As always, I wanna be honest with my viewers because $160 is quite a lot of money for some people. Such a shame, I really wanted this keyboard to be my new main keyboard, but it is what it is. But hey, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments below what else can you think of that Lamzu can do to improve this keyboard. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.